Hey guys, thanks so much for joining us today. We're so excited. We have a very special word coming. So grab your Bibles, grab your snacks, grab your notes, and let's get started. Pastor Kriya said something uh, a week or so ago that really um, was so powerful. Pastor Chris, to our staff, was telling us that we don't want Mark Church to move towards something. We want Mark Church to move toward God. And so thank you so much for pioneering a move of God. Aren't you glad to be a part of a community that doesn't rush a move of God, but actually embraces a move of God. Hey, you can be seated. I'm ready to preach. Come on. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Hey, how many of you were here last week? Come on, make some noise. Y'all in a quiet church? Yeah. Pastor Chris did some, uh, my back hurt from walking him around. If you were in second service, I had to carry his big tail during service. He talked about walking with God, and he gave us, you know, what it looked like when you, you walk with God, and you get so busy, and you're dragging God around, and we, we titled that Submission Part 1. Today, I'm going to preach on Submission Part 2, so we're going to talk about what submission is, uh, how do I walk with God? Anybody ever asked that question, how do I walk with God, and if you've been like me, what are the benefits of actually walking with God? What are the results of my life. What makes my life different if I walk with God? Hey, James chapter 4, 7 through 8 says this, humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinner. I mean, tell us like it is, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you sinner. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and and the world. So let's take a look. What, what is submission? Submission is the action of yielding to a superior force or a person. Now, that's pretty simple, right? Submission is pretty simple. Actually, not. Submission is not simple at all. It's something that we all struggle. Raise your hand if you struggle with submitting. Yeah, all across the room. Submission is hard, but why? Why is that? Why is submitting hard? I believe one of the reasons why submitting is hard is because we stubborn. You know some stubborn people? If you don't know some stubborn people, you the stubborn person that people raising their hand about. You stubborn. And what does it mean to be stubborn? It means you do what you want, when you want, how you want it. You cross your arms, you turn up your nose, and you look the other way because you're going to do exactly what you want. It's, it's a my way or the highway mentality. Like, you know, me and my wife, we get in a good argument every now and then. You know what I'm saying? I believe that's healthy for marriage. You know, sometimes I think she argues because we haven't argued in a while. But, <laughs> man, is she good at it, too. She's got a master's degree in it. <laughs> but we're talking about being stubborn, right? I could think many times, and she'll, she'll even she'll prove that this is accurate. You know, there's maybe one or two out of the year that I actually win in the arguments. And so... But those ones are great because we'll be arguing, and you ever been in an argument, and maybe like, like halfway through you realize like you're being a little dramatic, like it's not as bad as you're, you think it is, or, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm not right about this. Well, uh, you know, my, the woman that I married, and I'm going to say her name, but she's over here, she's got red hair, green eyes. <laughs> She's the type of person that is so stubborn, she will be halfway through and say, I'm too committed now, I can't turn back. <laughs> like, I'm not going to say I'm, you're right because I'm that stubborn. I can see you, I know we, you probably remember this story. You remember the story about the fan in the bedroom? You remember that? Well, if you know me, I cannot sleep without a fan in the room. Anybody's fan sleepers? Oh, oh, you felt that in your spirit. Boy, Tevin got happy over here. <laughs> Thought the Holy Spirit was going to take over. So I'm one of those people where, when I already don't sleep good, so I need perfect conditions to sleep. And so one of those things that makes the conditions perfect is your boy needs a fan. I need the breeze blowing on me. I need the sound. Well, this particular night, it was like 30 degrees outside, and our house was a little chilly, and Taylor was like, nah, you ain't having the fan on tonight. It's too cold. And I'm like, well, put more clothes on, cover yourself up more, go get a blanket. She's like, no, we're going to cut this fan off. I'm like, nah, we ain't. I'm standing my ground. I got my big boy pants on. I'm going to sleep with a fan on. 
And so we got this argument, Pastor Chris. It's like I put the fan on and I get in bed. She throws the covers off. She walks around and she turns the fan off. I wait till she gets all comfortable in bed because I'm petty at times. And I take my covers off and I plug it right back on. And it goes back and forth, back and forth. And I got so stubborn. You know what I did? This is crazy. I said, you know what? I'm going to go outside and I'm going to walk around the neighborhood and I'm just going to pray that God would just let her understand that I need the fan on and I can't sleep. And so maybe by the time I get there, she'll be asleep and I can turn the fan on without her knowing. You ever had moments where you're just stubborn, right? Can we be really honest? We're stubborn. And I think that's like some of us think that being petty and stubborn is a gift of the spirit, but it is not a gift of the spirit. Like some of y'all have got a double portion of stubbornness. Amen. And right, and so we're talking about walking with God, and so I want to talk about some reasons why we struggle with submitting and how God helps us get beyond that. Number one was kind of being stubborn. Number two is we got trust issues. Uh oh. Uh oh. What does it mean when I say we got trust issues? Like, I'm not saying you go to the drive thru and you trust your food is right, and you, you know, you've been hurt too many times in the drive thru line, so now you don't trust any drive thru. No, I'm saying trust issues are when you struggle to trust people because of the betrayal and the behavior of someone else. For example, all men are the same. If one lie, they all lie. That mentality where we, we just think about this. I mean, you've prayed for God to send you someone, right? You've prayed God to send you someone. I was that person. I prayed for God to send me someone. And you want to know, I, now... Some of y'all, I want you to take your religious hat off. I want you to take your, you know, I'm, uh, this is my prayer. This is the God honest prayer, Pastor Chris. This is what I told, this is what I told the Lord. I said, Lord, I want a girl that loves you, but got a big butt. <laughs> That's what I said. That's what I said. And God delivered. He delivered. He came through. God is still performing miracles today. Ah, my God. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Come on here. Look, he done got happy. He coming to the piano. If he can do it for me, he can do it for you. But listen, think about this, though. Think about how many you've prayed for somebody, God, to send you someone, right? Think about how many kings and queens that God has sent you, but because the moment you met them, you put someone else's personality and behavior on them and you push them away. And God is trying to send you people. He's trying to bring things to you, but because you've had trust issues with other people and you put those trust issues on other people, you can't receive the blessing of God. Somebody shout, God trying to bless you. But you got trust issues and you're stubborn. Don't worry. We're going we're gonna to help you today. We're going to help you today. So one, you stubborn. Two, you got trust issues. And number three, I'm going to say we got a fear of change. Fear of change. We people of routine. We love our comfort zones. We like it the way we want it. We resist change. This is why we don't like change. Is because we believe that the moment we accept change, we lose our control. And so because of that, we don't like change. I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about like the change. Like I'll go to like out back and there's three things that I'm going to get. I'm not changing nothing. I don't want to hear about your menu or your special. I want to know how good it is. I ain't trying it. Because why? Because I don't want to pay $15 for something I know I might not like. So I ain't changing. I, ain't, I got a fear of change and wasting money. But did you know this, that fear of change has been given a medical term. It's that serious. Like, people have been diagnosed with this because of the fear of change, because of the damage that it causes to the health of the individual. So when you don't change, you're not being healthy. When you don't change, you are destroying your health. It's called, uh, my, my wife told me how to pronounce this. I'm about to butcher this name. Metathesiophobia. Yes, metathesiophobia, boy. Hey, yeah. I thought we was going to dance, but you, you messed me up. Man. Come on. Be in the spirit, Monte. Be in the spirit. Metathesiophobia is the fear of change. Now, listen. The fear of change is said 
This is what the doctors say. This is what the medical professionals say. This is not made up. That fear of change is said to reduce one's will to live and shortens their life. So what that means is without, without change, there is no growth, there is no de development, there is no maturity. Come on, don't we need to mature? Yeah. Refusing to change can reduce the life that you are able to live. And I want to help you today because submitting is hard. We struggle with submitting. But when we talk about submitting to God and walking with God, God makes it easy for us. God makes it easy. Let me just say this, that there, there's no life walking with God unless your life is submitted to God. That means if you're going to walk with God, you submit to his ways. If you're going to walk with God, you can submit to his change. If you walk with God, you submit to the convictions that he's given you. So let's talk about it. How, how do I walk with God? Come on, write this down, put it in a notepad or something. Submit to his plan. We, tr we got trouble with submitting because we're stubborn, but we got to submit to his plan. What do I mean? Like you got to be okay not having it your way. God is not going to change his mind. He ain't going to pull out this big eraser and start erasing your story and his plans for you because you're stubborn and you want God to do it your way. You know what God says about your stubbornness? Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, for I know the plans I have for you. He says the Lord, there are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. Proverbs 19, 21, you can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Isaiah 55 and 9, my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything that you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Romans 11 and 36, for everything comes from him. And exists by his power and is intended for his glory. All the glory belongs to him. What is God saying? Listen, I can go on and on and on with scriptures that prove that your stubbornness has to go. That God's plan is greater for you. Scriptures that declare plans and purpose and all these things that God has for you. Did you know that God's plan for you is better than your plan that you have for you? So I want you to do, I want you to uncross your arms, stop smacking your lips and putting your nose up high. Submit to God's plan for you. Begin to walk out the plan that He has for you. Walk out God's plan. God's plan. Submit to His plan. Because here's the reality is that when you submit to his plan, it doesn't only bless you, but it blesses people that are around you. Because you're walking in purpose. You're walking in your full potential. You're walking into everything that God has destined for you. You see, this is the hard part with submitting to God's plan is because every, every time you, God's telling you to do something, it's not always for you. But when you submit to God's plan, you realize that your actions affect other people's blessings. And I'll never forget, Taylor and I were going to the mall, and we were going, uh, we were going shopping because I, I love to shop. And we were going there. We had dinner, and we were getting ready to go. And I met someone. We were passing by. You ever had those people on Facebook that you're Facebook friends with, but when you see them in public, you're like, <laughs> right? Quit doing that. Like, just delete them. Y'all nosy, but don't want to talk to people. Well, I never met this guy, but I knew he was on my Facebook. And so he walks by. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? How you doing? So we start talking, and we start walking away. And the Holy Spirit's like, give him all the money in your pocket. I'm like, the, the, the devil? <laughs> Trying to get me in a trap here. And so I look at Taylor. You remember this? I heard Taylor, I said, we got to go back. I got to give him the cash that's in my, my pocket. And now it's not much, but, you know. It was enough for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I go in and I find him. He's in the cheesecake factory. I find him. It's him and his wife. And I said, hey, man, listen. The Lord told me to give you all the money. So I'm going to walk in my pocket. I don't carry much cash. It's, it's only $40. But, hey, I want to give you $40. I want you to know God, God loves you. He, ble he wants to bless you today. And he cares about you. And he sees you. And we walk away. We walk away, and that was it. Nothing amazing happened. We, he didn't make a Facebook post about it or something. Let me tell you what happened. It's later that night, he messages me, and he says, Brother, listen, 
And let me tell you, what, let me encourage you about your obedience to God's plan for you that day. See, my plan was me to go spend the money in my pocket to go get me something to wear, maybe some shoes, maybe to get a super, you know, super double doozy, super double doozy, you know what I'm saying, from the All-American cookie, you know what I'm saying? Let the church say, man, hi, ah, my God. So, if y'all don't know this, your executive pastor loves sugar double doozies. Uh, why ain't y'all writing it down? What are y'all doing? This is, put it in your notes. And so he messages me, Pastor Chris, he messages me that night, and he says, I want you to know about your obedience, your obedience to God. That morning, I went to the gas station, and the gas station clerk gave me back $40 too much. And so I went back, and I said, hey, you've given me $40 too much. Here's your $40 back. He said, now, the reality of it was that I needed that extra money, but conviction would not let me keep it. And so I took it back. He said, when you come by at Cheesecake Factory, our bill was exactly $40. Listen, this, he said, this is what I want you to know. He said, it's not the blessing of the money. It's the blessing that you acted when you acted out God's plan for you of that day. It proved that God's faithfulness was for me. Because if you would have known how my week went when we're trying to build a house and yet money just, just went away and we didn't have the money and all these things happened, he said, you just proved to me that God sees me. I want you to know that when you submit to God's plan, it's just not for you, but it is for people that are around you and that people can see the glory of God. What did that scripture say? What did it say? It said his plan exists for his glory. I didn't give him money because I didn't want to give him money. I gave him money because the Lord said to do it. Why? Because the the Lord gets the glory when you submit to his plan. Number two. Number two, write this down. How, how do you submit to the Lord? How do you walk with God? How do you walk with God? You trust his word. I'm going to fix your trust issues today. Let the church say amen. amen. Yes, sir. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, well known. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Somebody shout all. Uh huh. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. Somebody shout all. all. And he will show you which path to take. Psalms 37 and 5. Yeah, y'all getting the scriptures today. Y'all getting it. Commit everything to the Lord. Trust him. And he will help you. I want you to know that God is faithful. The Bible says this, that he is not a man that he would lie. And I know trusting is hard. I'm not trying to ignore the fact that trusting people is hard. Trusting God is hard because faith is not trusting in what you can see, but trusting the one who can see. And I know that is hard, but we've called to do that. And I know it's hard because you've been let down. How many have been let down by some people? How many have you been told by someone that they would do something? Or you've been told someone about the way they feel about you and come to find out that it's a lie. Trust is hard. My dad used to always say this, that trust is, is, is easy to break, but it's hard to get back, right? But, you know, why is that? Why is trust easy to break and hard to get back? It's because our mind is conditioned to think back to the pain or the mistake that is attached to a person. So the moment we get hurt, every time we see them, our mind is conditioned to go back to pain. So instead of seeing forgiveness and grace that we have given them, we choose to see the moment that the trust was broken. And God ain't about that life. He don't want you to be about that life. We say we forgive, but I won't forget. How many of you say that? I forgive you, but I won't forget. Don't you? I ain't going to forget it. And let me tell you this. Let me correct it because that is not true forgiveness and it's not true redemption of trust. Because we live our whole life building cases against people that should have been tossed out the moment that we said, I forgive you. I'm trying to help you today. Because as you walk with the Lord, you trust him with the pain that you have. You can't walk with the Lord and submit everything to him but your pain. 
and your heartache and your stress and your worry. Don't submit everything to him when it's going to bless your bank account, when it's going to bless your relationships. You have to trust God with your pain. How do you do that? When you walk with God, say, God, I've been hurt, but I trust you to heal me as I'm forgiving. As I'm walking out forgiveness, I am being healed. I refuse to have trust issues. I refuse to forget. The Bible says this, forgive as you have been forgiven. Psalms 37, let's go back to it. Commit everything. Somebody shout everything. everything. Commit everything to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. That means commit even your trust issues. Even the things you don't want to move on from. Even the things that you struggle with. Give it to God because he's going to help you. He's going to show up. He's going to help you. And I, I feel that. I feel it in the room that you've been hurt. People said things that didn't come to pass. You feel, you feel, you find out that what they said was a lie. There were some people that said they felt the same, they felt certain ways about you, and they got you close enough just to use you and they, just to get what they wanted. But no matter the pain, I want you to know that you can trust God to heal you and restore everything that a man or a woman has taken from you. Do you believe it? Shout amen. amen. Isaiah 26. 3 through 4 says this, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed up on you because you because he trusts in you, trust in the Lord forever for the Lord God is an everlasting rock and you can trust the one who never fails. You can trust him. Most of the times when you talk about trust falls, of trust, you're going to do a trust fall. Well, I ain't doing a trust fall because I don't trust none of y'all to catch me. <laughs> this ground is hard. There ain't much cushion on this uh, cow print, whatever, whatever animal we slayed for this. <laughs> Move on, Jesus. Hallelujah. But when you do a trust fall, right, the trust fall is... To see that the person will always have your back, that they won't leave you hanging. Like when you fall, they're going to be there to catch you, right? You, this is the one benefits of walking with God, that you're, you're never alone. You can trust that he's with you. You can trust that he's always got your back. Now, I'm going to tell you a story, but I don't want you to judge me, okay? Back when I was building my testimony, hallelujah, my dad's here. My dad's here, and I don't know if he's heard this story. Pray, saints. And, uh, and I'm grown now. I'm married, and I have a four-year-old daddy. You can't spank me today. I remember, when, so back when I was, this was, I was probably 20, 21, and I, I got two older brothers, so, you know, Justin, when you're as little as me, you want to fight everybody to prove that you ain't no punk. You know what I'm saying? Walk with a little strut. I, there was a point in my life where if you looked at me wrong, Pastor Chris, I would go to you and say, what's up? What's up? You know what I'm saying? Take me back to 06, boy, they in trouble. I heard, no, seriously, this part of my life, my daddy will remember this. Me and this guy just kept arguing back and forth. My dad got fed, so fed up. He said, you know what? We're going to put up, we're going to build us a boxing ring in the backyard, and I'm going to charge everybody $5. I'm going to make some money off your stupidity. <laughs> Needless to say, we didn't make it to the house to do the fight because he said something to me at Walmart while I'm with my mama, and I ended up hitting him, and so he didn't make it to the house. I don't know. You didn't know that. But here's the story I want to get to. Here's the story I want to get to. We were, I was at a bowling alley, okay? Bowling, bowling alley in Larnburg, North Carolina. Yes, how, nothing, nothing good happens at a bowling alley, okay? Nothing at all, except the nachos. That's it. That's it. So I'm at the bowling alley, and the guy that I'm hanging out with has to run over and get his girl or something, so I'm there just chilling by myself. It's very rare because at this point, I was throwing hotel parties and I'd have 30 people show up from all kind of counties. It would just be bananas. And at this point, like I was never alone, but this guy that was with me, he left. And so three dudes show up, and luckily for me, one of them was the one that I've been talking junk to for the past week. And he show up, and he's like, what's up? And I'm like, what's up? 
I got a pool stick. What's up? So I make one text, Pastor Chris, I make one text to a guy. I'm going to shout him out because he, we, we still communicate. His name's Thomas. Thomas. You probably remember Thomas. And so I text him. I'm like, yo, this boy's here. Because he didn't like the guy either. So I text him. like, yo, this boy's here. I'm by myself. I says, three against one. I think I can take two, but the other one I'm going to have to let you handle. And so <laughs> this is no lie. I take, I, I send one text. About five minutes of running my mouth, ten minutes of running my mouth with this guy. I'm like, let's just go outside, bro. Let's just go, let's just go outside. Okay? There's kids here. Let's just let's go outside. I'll lead the way. I'll follow my side. So we go outside, and when you walk outside, the parking lot is right here. And when we walk outside, this is no lie. There is 30 people. It's like they made a runway. I got 15 over here, and I got 15 right here, and me and him are right here. He walks out because he didn't know none of them. They were all there for me. <laughs> I made one text. This is no lie. It's a true story. I made, I'm saying, I made one text. 30 people showed up in 10 minutes. Wow. I'm like, y'all, oh, I got this, but I appreciate the support. <laughs> so we get there. Needless to say, he's like, you know what? He made a good decision. We're going to leave. Me and my, boy, me and my boys, we're going to go. So they start leaving, right? Well, okay, everything's good. We just chilling now. The guy that I did text is 10 minutes late. So he shows up. This dude busts out of his Jeep, runs straight to this guy, grabs him by his long hair, and beats his face in the concrete. I'm like, yo, we good. He's leaving. He's exiting. Don't bring him back. Like, what's up? He's like, no, 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 uh-uh. Nope, I didn't waste my time driving 20 minutes to get here. Well, I'm going to do so. You hit him, I'm going to hit him. It don't matter. I got your back. And you see, here's the thing about that. God is the same way. God ain't going to slap somebody and put their face in the concrete. But God will show up when nobody else will. God said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. When the back is up against the wall, God said, I will be there. He said, if, if I be for you, who can be against you? Is anybody glad that God has showed up in the nick of time when you thought you had it all together? He showed up and he said, it's all right, I'm here. Daddy's here. I'm taking care of you. God will always have your back. When you walk with God, you can have confidence that nobody's going to touch you. No harm will come to you. And Job, Job 23, Job was going through all this mess, and he says, I don't see you on my right, and I don't perceive you on my left. I look forward, and you're not there. I look behind me, and you're not there. He said, but you know what? Even though I can't see you, and I don't feel you, the ending part of that scripture, Job chapter 23, he said, but you know the way that I take. I want you to know that you may not know where God is. You may not sense him, but God knows where you're at. He knows what you're up against, and God has a plan that gets you victorious. God has a plan that gets you freedom. God has a plan that when you walk with him, you're walking to victory. You're going to see a victory because it belongs to the Lord. And when you walk with him, you ain't got to worry about it. You ain't got to have no trust issues. Why? Because God always has your back. That's good to me. Good to me. No matter who fails you, God is faithful. God is faithful. How, how, how do I walk? How do I walk with God? I submit to his plan. I trust his word. Number three, change it up. Change it up. Romans 12, 2. Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Fear of change will kill your life. Fear of change can kill you. It can, it can kill the life that you desire and the better life that God has for you. Listen, walking with God demands change. It warrants change. It requires change. You, there's nobody that's ever walked with God that stayed the same. Amen? God is forever changing. Change is hard. Change hurts. Change Change is not good sometimes. But if you commit to changing it up, somebody shout change it up. Yeah. If you commit to changing it up, God can lead you to become the masterpiece that we talk about in Ephesians that he intended you to become. 
And change is hard, and change gets sketchy at times, but change is necessary. Did you hear me? Change is necessary. Scripture demands change. If you submit your life to Jesus, it demands change. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. Thank you, Jesus. A new life has begun. Glory to God. As you walk with God, change will begin to happen. What, what kind of change, Pastor Seth, are you talking about? When I walk with God, what kind of change? Well, when you used to cuss, you won't be cussing no more. The things that you used to say, you won't say no more. There's a guy that goes to my home church. He's an older guy. He used to tell me, he said, man, before I got saved, I cussed like a sailor. Every word I'd say was a cuss word. I got saved on Sunday. The Monday I was at work, I hit my thumb, and I busted out laughing because I I didn't say a cuss word. I didn't say, oh, I said, ouch. He said, I got to laughing because God had, when I started walking with God and I submitted my life to him, God changed me quicker than I thought I could be changed. I want you to know that God can change you in a moment. As you walk with God, begin with, begin to shift things in your life. That attitude that you have, God can fix it. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to be sad. You don't have to be depressed. God said, I'll give you a joy that is unspeakable, a joy that you can't complain, you can't explain, a joy that don't make any sense when hell can be breaking loose you say the joy of the Lord is my strength and though I walk with the Lord he's got my hand and he's walking with me and I can be delivered and set free as I'm walking with God listen listen here's a good thing Here's the good thing. This is going to fix you right here. As you walk with God, you'll start having compassion for people that you thought you'd never have compassion for. You start having passion. White people will start having compassion for black people. And black people will start having compassion for white people. And all ethnicity is because you don't have to participate, but you can have compassion. Listen. Listen. This is the part that God teaches us. This is where he corrects us because we think that we have to associate with someone's pain to have a compassion for their pain. We think that we have to relate to their situation to have a compassion for their situation. But God walked up the blind people that he had never been blind for. And the Bible said he was moved with compassion. And because of that, he touched them and they were made whole. The Bible said he saw people that were leprous. And the moment that he saw them, compassion became over him. And because other people were wouldn't touch them. Other people wouldn't come near them. God said, I want to walk with you and I have compassion for you. Be healed. Stand up and walk. As you walk with God, He'll change it up. He'll change it up. Pastor Chris, Mark Church is changing it up. He's changing it up. Look at the room. Pastor Chris says it all the time. You're looking at a miracle of people that are walking with God and doing as God says, allowing God to change their heart, change their mentality, change their vision of people. I don't see you by your condition. I don't see you by your brokenness. I don't see you by your mess. I see you as a son. I see you as a daughter. I see you as called. I see you as chosen. I see you as a masterpiece. And as you start walking with God, your perception of people will begin to change. And He will start changing you. And you will become a better person. You will become a better father. A better mother. A better friend. A better co-worker. As you walk with him, you'll begin to go deeper and deeper. I want you to think of a submarine. You ever walk with God as you go deeper? A submarine's purpose is to take people to levels they couldn't go by themselves. It takes people to places that they could not go on their own abilities and their own strengths. Listen, walking with Jesus is the same way. He'll take you places that you never thought you would go. He'd open doors that you never thought he would open. He would close doors that you never thought could get shut. Because you know what? A closed door is just as powerful as an open door as long as God is controlling the handle. 
real. And as you start walking with God, you'll realize that God wants to take you deeper. He wants to take you further. He wants you to take you places that you never thought you would ever go. He wants you to get the promotion. He wants your dreams to be fulfilled. And what you thought was great, God will elevate you to a level that you could have never attained by yourself. Somebody shout, you got to change it up. Come on, you got to change it up. You got to submit your will, your plans to the Lord. To to walk with God, you got to be able to change it up. Listen, walking with God is not all about experiences. Walking with God is not all about encounters. Let me prove it to you. Think about it. There was only one upper room experience. Only one upper room experience and encounter. After that, those that were in the upper room took the experience that they had and they became an experience. Walking with Jesus, we no longer walk with God looking for an experience, but we walk with Him to become an experience for the world to see. That as God is changing me, He's helping me change the world because I'm showing that I've experienced God. And because I've experienced God, I can walk out with His power, with His authority. I can lay hands on the sick and they be healed. I can open up blinded eyes. I can lay hands and speak to people that are depressed and joy become over their heart. Listen, as you walk with God, you have to be an experience. Come on, Pastor Chris. As you walk with God and you stay connected with God, you're you're taking on His characteristics. You're taking on His personality. You're taking on His power. You've taken on His authority. He said, you know what? As you walk with me, if you'll stay connected, you'll do greater things than I ever did. You'll see a movement in the city of Fayetteville that they've never seen. 2,000 can be saved. 10,000 can be saved. Don't stop because I can take you greater and further than you ever thought you could go but you've got to walk with me walk with me come on stand all across this room stand all across this room submitting to God is to live a life with God a submitted life is a connected life to the one who gave his life. Let's go back, third James chapter four back up. So humble yourselves before God, resist the devil and he will flee, amen. You know, we love to shout about that. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. There's a promise right there. Don't miss the promise. Don't miss the promise. Justin, stand right there. Don't miss the promise. You look more like Jesus than I do, so you're Jesus. promise in here as you get close to God God gets close to you and as you get close to God God gets close to you and as you get close to God God gets close to you and as you get close to God you begin walking with him you begin talking with him he makes himself available to you we're talking about walking with God Listen, if you'll start taking steps, God ain't a mile away. God ain't another state away. God is here. He's close enough to see you taking steps. He's close enough to see that you're taking the initiative to take a step. My dad used to always say, son, I wish you would take an initiative. Well, I'll tell you this. The greatest initiative that I took, Pastor Chris, was taking a step toward the Father. Because the cross... The cross is the perfect place for imperfect people. And boy, am I imperfect. So as I continue to take steps toward the cross and toward Jesus, he continues to get closer and closer and closer to me. And the good thing is you can't get close to God. You can't get close to God. So listen, James James is teaching us this. He says, he says, 
Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. God and the world. What's he saying here? He says you're divided. You're double-minded in all your ways. You want God on certain times of your life. And you want the world on certain parts of your life. I'm telling you, Pastor Chris, I was the best Sunday Christian and the best weekday sinner. I had it perfected. I was living the line that James was talking about. I was dabbling in the world to believe my friends to please the community around me and I would dabble over here on the left side on Sunday with the church to please my mama to please my daddy to please my pastor but God said listen you need to repent from your sinful ways you need to purify your heart because if you'll just turn toward me some of you just need to turn turn toward him and pursue him and pursue a walk with him the Bible says this, 1 John 1 and 9. He said, if we'll confess our sins, God is faithful. There it is again. He's faithful. Aren't you glad you serve a faithful God? He said, he is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Listen, God's waiting on you. God's waiting on you. I know this word is kind of, it comes, it attacks us. But it strengthens us because with pain there is strength. With truth there is strength. Listen, you may be here today and you're like, I, I, I want to walk with God. I want to I I I I get closer to God. I, I've been just like you, Pastor Seth. I still throw hands if somebody says something they look at me the wrong way. I still got a bad mouth. I'll cuss every night. I, I still got an attitude. I'm still, I'm still struggling with pornography. I'm still struggling with alcohol. I'm still struggling with cigarettes and all these things. But listen, as you get close to God, God begins to purify you. God begins to correct the things that the enemy thought was okay. Listen. Church is not about a lot of do's and don'ts. Church is about relationship. And you don't grow unless you have a relationship with the Lord. David, what a great opportunity to start a relationship with the Lord. Why? Because these are the results of walking with God, Pastor Chris. These are the results. There's favor. There's blessing. There's freedom. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Any free people in the house. That may be you in this room. You said, I, I, I want to rededicate my life or I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to dedicate time to walk with God. To walk with God. Lord, if you say that's you, I want you to slip your hand up. You say, I want to be closer to God. I need to get some things in order. I, I need to purify my heart, my thoughts. I need to get rid of some stuff. Come on. Come on, don't be ashamed. Pastor Chris says it every week. If you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. Listen, this is the God that loves you. He sees your mess. You can't hide it from him anyway. He sees it. The beautiful thing is he ain't seeing it and talking about it. He's seeing it and saying, here's freedom. He's seeing it and saying, I've made a way of escape for you. You don't have to be bound anymore. You don't have to struggle with those things anymore. Because I can set you free if you will just submit and take a walk with As a dad, there are moments where my son will mess up. He'll he'll be rude. I did this, I did this yesterday. He had a little attitude while we were outside. And he said something he shouldn't have said, and I said, Hey, walk with me. I said, son, you know you can't you can't act like that no more. You can't, it's, it's not nice to say, you can't talk to daddy that more. Because really, you know what we've talked about? Taylor said this yesterday, I, I got to quit spanking Levi. I got to quit, I got to quit spanking him so much. Now, he's going to get his butt whooped when he needs it, but. And I walked with him, I began to talk to him. You know what I told him? I said, you're not the person you are right now. 
That rudeness, that's not who you are. That attitude, that's not who you are. And listen, as you walk with God, he takes you by the hand and says, listen, that's not who you were created to be. You don't have to be addicted. You don't have to be bound. You don't have to struggle. Listen, submit your life to me and walk this thing out with me. And I will show you what freedom truly looks like.